Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field of Grounds for Beck Tibers. Now the soybean harvest is pretty well concluded for most of us, it's time to dig into why we saw such large yield variances or disparities across our soybean acres this fall. Certainly rainfall had a really big impact. We know soil type, or more notably, water on capacity played a major role. But what about those areas of the field where you had some timely rains, felt like you had adequate rain, or perhaps you have higher organic matter that still left you disappointed? The number one robber of U.S. soybean production in terms of yield is actually soybean cyst nematode. However, our populations throughout our fields will vary rather significantly. Many times the, the environments that lead to higher productivity, like higher fertility, silt loams, productive sands, oftentimes where we find our highest populations. We also see elevated populations in pure sands and gravel as well. But then on the contrary, typically our lower fertility and our clay textures, soils, are typically our populations are somewhat reduced. Now what makes 2024 rather unique or should call attention to perhaps is cis nematode playing a role is our environment. We had a lot of flash droughts. We had overall a fairly dry growing season throughout much of the area. Warm, dry environments are much more conducive to soybean cis nematode reproduction as well. Fall is also the best time to sample. You know, we get about six to seven generations throughout Ohio and Indiana of soybean cis nematode throughout the growing season. Fall is when, when recommendations and our baselines have been developed so that we realize the full extent of those six to seven generations and our recommendations are based on those full extent of those populations at the end of fall. Now taking those samples in the fall is not overly difficult. It's very similar to taking a soil sample for fertility. We just use a regular soil probe, but where we take the sample is a little unique. Soil sample for fertility, you're gonna take it randomly throughout say a two and a half acre grid or a soil type. When we pull these soil samples to be evaluated for cis nematode populations, we actually wanna take them right in the row. So find a row and actually insert the probe right into the old soybean plant and into that taproot at a slight angle to get a better evaluation right around that host plant of what our populations are. Now when you're selecting areas of the field, I'd encourage you, utilize your yield maps. Pick out the areas of the field that were disappointing, they were maybe red, you felt like they should have been higher than they were, they were disappointing in terms of yield, and pull 10 to 12 cores from there and put them in a plastic bag, and then pull another sample from the areas of the field or an area of the field that was higher yielding. That way you can compare and contrast. Now don't put these cores, these 10 to 12 cores that comprise one sample, put them in a plastic bag as opposed to a paper bag because we want to actually maintain that moisture and keep them cool as well before we send them to the lab. Now the good news is if you're an Ohio soybean grower, you can get two samples processed for free through Ohio soybean, through uh, sponsored by the Ohio Soybean uh, Council, through Ohio State University, the submission form is in front of you, as well as if you have a local lab you'd like to utilize or you can actually just take them there because you're close by, most soils labs also will run samples for soybean cyst nematode populations as well. Now when it comes to uh, understanding, or I should say more importantly, controlling cyst nematode, it's really important that we take more of a, 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 an approach that entails multiple ways of controlling cyst nematode. Number one is genetics. We've got about three or four options, but the first one is genetics. Unfortunately, we're a little bit limited. Just like the overuse of Roundup, the overuse of a, of a single source of genetic resistance called PI88788, which is utilized in well over 90% of the soybean varieties on the market today in all seed companies, has led to the diminishment of the effectiveness of that source. However, there's another source called Peking where populations are higher, particularly on like really sandy ground or those productive sands, silt loams, where we know we have higher populations, I'd encourage you to select varieties that have the Peking source of resistance because it's much, much more effective. However, selecting a whole farm of varieties that contain Peking is gonna be very, very difficult. That's where uh, point number two or management practice number two comes into play. A much more universal uh, approach is also with seed treatment. It's going to take a multitude of ways to control in this particular pest, but, but seed treatments are one of the one of the primary strategies. Then in Escalate Bag, we actually have two ways of controlling cis nematode. We use a biological nematocyte called Nemasect, as well as if you use the upgrade package, hard chemistry called Saltro. Now there's other products on the market like Aleva that kill cis nematode, but Saltro is hard chemistry, so it's not working biologically that is highly effective at controlling cis nematode as well as SDS. And those two problems or those two yield robbing pests oftentimes go synonymous with one another. The cis actually create the entry point for the fusarium that causes sudden death to actually enter the plant in the first place. And then the last control measure is really rotation. You know, corn, wheat, are not host crops to soybean cyst nematodes. So the longer we, we remain out of soybeans, 
the better or the more successful we are going to be at lowering those populations. But keep in mind, if you just go from soybeans to corn back to soybeans, I wouldn't expect your populations to diminish overnight or diminish rapidly. It's that extensive time that we keep and maintain a non-host crop that's going to be much more effective at lowering those cyst nematode populations. So just something to keep in mind as we go went through this growing season, we see a large variance in terms of yield and why the warm, dry soil environment they have had in 2024 very well may be contributed to those large yield disparities or variances that we see. As always, if you have any questions, give us a call.